This video is sponsored by Nanlite. Now let me break this down in an easy step-by-step -step tutorial for you all and let's cover todo el pelo. Step number one is to use a projector as your background light. In this example, I'm using the Epson Home Cinema 880 and what you want to make sure you do is turn off all of the house lights or lights in the studio and try to get it as dark as possible because once you find your image that you're going to project, if you have the lights on in the studio, it's going to decrease your color and your contrast on your image. So here is a comparison when I'm using the projector on the wall with the lights on and when I turn the lights off, you'll see an immediate difference between the color and contrast. Now I had my projector placed camera left out of the frame and what I love about this specific projector is that I can straighten out the frame even though I have it at an angle, I'm able to reposition the image to make sure that it's straight when I'm shooting straight into the wall. And so when I set up my projector, of course, I looked for a colorful image online because that was kind of my overall goal and theme for the shoot. And I knew that I was going to be using color as my rim lights. So this was the image that I settled on. So when you have your projector and your image, the next step that you need to do is get your overall base exposure. Basically, how dark and bright do you want your background to be? So here what you're going to see me do is I set my shutter speed first at 320th of a second. I decided on aperture 1.6. And really what I'm doing is that I'm adjusting my ISO to dictate how bright or dark. So my final ISO was set to 400. Once I had my base exposure of the background light, I added my key light, which was the Forza 150B positioned 45 degrees to the subject with a grid to avoid light spill on the background. And what I love about the Forza 150B is that it's the perfect LED light for on the go shooting, live streams, photo shoots, and content creation. And the main reason why I used a grid is that I wanted to avoid light spill on the background light, which is that projector. If any of that light spills and hits the projector, what you're gonna see is if we look at this comparison, without the grid, you'll notice that the light spills on to the background, which decreases the color and contrast. And once I add my grid, you'll notice that I still retain that beautiful color and contrast of my background light. Since I'm working with LED lights, I adjusted my power output to match the background to find the right balance, which in this case, I used 42% power at 6,500 Kelvin. And the final touch that I added to my key light, I did notice that I was getting a little bit more shadows that I wanted on the unlit side of the face. So I added a white V-flat to fill in those shadows. Step number three is to add two rim lights. With my background light and my key light in place, 
I wanted to add two Nanlite Pavo Tube 30Xs as my rim lights to match the background color. And I placed these 45 degrees behind the subject, camera left and camera right. When I first added these rim lights, I did notice that the light was spilling onto the background, once again, reducing the vibrance and contrast of the projected image. So in order to fix that, I added two pieces of cinefoil to create flags and barn doors to direct the light to the subject only and eliminating the light spill on the background. Here's a comparison with the cinefoil and then without the cinefoil. And so you'll notice just a subtle difference, once again, just retaining the contrast and the vibrancy of the background light. In order to give myself more creative options, I set each Nanlite Pavo tube to hue loop mode, which means that the colors are gonna constantly be changing instead of just restricting myself to two colors. Now, each of these Pavo tubes was set to 80% dim for my rim lights. And one of the things I forgot to mention is that each of these Pavo tubes was held up by the Nanlite Pavo tube holder, which is great because I can angle and maneuver each of the Pavo tubes in any angle and direction that I want. Step number four is the final results. With my background light, my key light, and my two rim lights in place, I wanted to add a little bit of atmosphere to the scene, so I bought this bubble machine off of Amazon to just add a little bit of fun to the photo shoot. If you all enjoyed this video and you're new to the channel, I'm gonna leave you all off with some other videos like editing tutorials and other behind the scenes content. Make sure to subscribe because this channel is all about educational content. You all have a beautiful day and I will see you on the next one.